Rumination. While mental health is a lot more talked about these days, you almost think it's normal. I thought it was normal. You know. There's one topic that doesn't get much thought. Rumination. When I read that's a thing, I was like, holy crap, there's a word for this? This isn't normal? But now, that's all about to change. I guess I knew it didn't feel normal, but at this, that I didn't feel normal, but at the same time, I just figured everybody was going through it it's or something. It's all you know. This is life. Yeah. This is life. I figured this is how it is. Amy Edwards, podcast host, author, and transformational rock star and I share a conversation about our merry-go-round minds. And people look at you crazy, like, why can't you let this go? Why do you keep talking about this? And you know, it's like, why don't you do that? Like, why aren't you replaying every scenario over and over and over and over and over and over and get, you know, in your head? And the miracle treatment that helped her rewire her brain and win the battle over her thoughts. It felt like I've been tracing a circle in sand on a table over and over. And it felt like someone just came and blew away all the sand, just all gone. And wow. I was like, wow, I know. Any time anybody that's struggling with rumination and listening to us, I think that that is something that has really truly helped me. On an all new intentional living with Courtney Myers. <laughs> Welcome to Intentional Living with Courtney Myers, a podcast dedicated to those seeking a more fulfilled and purposeful life through thought provoking conversation, spiritual exploration, and authentic connections. The intentional movement has begun, and if you found yourself here, you are a part of it. Intentional Living with Courtney Myers starts now. Hi, Amy. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Intentional Living with Courtney Myers. I am really excited to have this conversation with you today, to meet you and to hear all about everything that makes you, you, because everything I know about you is you are what I would call a transformational rock star. You're a rock star in every sense of the word. So welcome. Thank you so much, Courtney. It's so nice to meet you. And I just, I love the name of your show, Intentional Living. You know, the more intentional that we get, the better life gets, I believe. And so anyway, I'm honored to be here. So thank you so much. Of course. That is, that is the thing is I think we do need to take life so intentionally. And as I've gotten older, I've realized that, you know, so many of us go through life and just kind of go with the flow, which is great. But when we really set our mind to something and take those steps and get intentional about what we're doing with our time, that's when things really start to happen for us, I feel. And I know you have a journey of living a full life and then almost kind of reinventing yourself midlife. Can you tell me about that? I True. I have reinvented myself many times and <laughs> I don't know still what's to come. So yeah, you know what is, is, is an, a recurring theme for sure in my life, but I feel like there were a lot of times that I wasn't intentional about it. And mm. podcasting is a great one because I'm on my third iteration of a podcast. And since we're on a podcast, I can talk about that from here. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, um, I feel like the first podcast that I had was more, on a whim. Some people were starting a podcast studio. Podcasting was really new. It was like 2014. And so they said, we're starting a beta studio. You know, would you like to maybe be a tester for our studio and start a podcast? And I was like, sure. I had a background in radio. And so mm -hmm. I jumped in and did it. And I realized in hindsight that I wasn't intentional. And it taught me a big lesson because I just jumped in rather than really focusing on my intention. And so when I started the show I have now, the Amy Edwards Show, I was like, this one, I'm really going to approach it with deep intention. And mm -hmm. I hope that that is an overarching theme in my life. I've tried to get more intentional all the time. And that doesn't mean we're not like sporadic about things, but yeah. it does mean that even when we are, we can approach those moments, you know, with a deep breath and a tuning in and a consciousness and an intention that brings awareness. And really, I believe that just brings us into the present moment and gets our mindset in the most optimal place for whatever it is we're about to do. So that's, I guess I ended up defining what that means to me, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's been really a practice that I've had to learn over time and remember. Mm -hmm. And each time I reinvent myself, I do try to do it with intention even more so now because I've been divorced twice and I have two kids. And then career wise, I took up rock and roll when I was about 40 years old and became a rock and roll artist, which I really didn't see coming at all. I didn't play guitar. I hadn't never written a song. I had sung in 
in high school choir. And so I said yes to some friends that were starting this and it ended up taking my life on a path for a few years that was a complete surprise. And I even learned about becoming more intentional as I transformed in that space. And as I Mm. became someone who was a songwriter and I learned that craft and I wrote albums and I developed, I learned that I could get much more intentional in my singing and in my songwriting. Mm -hmm. And I could bring that to anything that I did. And so Mm -hmm. I did. And with songwriting, I, you know, my first album that I wrote, I was a little bit scared. And I think sometimes we can lose that intentionality when we transform Mm. out of fear. And so I leaned on other people to help me write. I leaned on my husband at the time and I leaned on my producer. And after that, I realized, oh, this isn't really my voice. And so the more intentional we get with Mm. those transformations, the more we're tapping into our own voice, the more Mm. we're really feeling who we are and getting vulnerable in the process. And that's Mm. what resonates with people. And bonus, Mm -hmm. then we're even more proud of ourselves because we know that that's really real. That's really us. And at least that's been my experience and the things that I've discovered as I've reinvented myself. Well, definitely. And I think that vulnerability is so key because, I mean, I talk about this as I'm a storyteller, I'm a writer, I'm a producer, I come from that world. And it's, it's, the, that connection you have with people only comes from getting vulnerable and really telling your story and finding your voice. But there is so much fear attached to it. How do you find that courage to really fully step into that? <laughs> practice. Everything is a practice. <laughs> uh, fear is just, that's like the overarching, you know, nemesis. I think yeah. that I have faced over and over and over. And for some reason, I keep doing stuff. And I think that the more you do it, the easier it gets. It's as simple Mm -hmm. as that. So, you know, the first time that you step on stage, that's, you might throw up. But, um, (laughs) and then I think there's people who never overcome that. But the more you do it, the easier it gets, for sure. Mm -hmm. And so that's the thing. You just, you have to at least do it once, you know, Mm -hmm. just just get the fear to just shut its shut its face for just a little while and let the desire and the hope and that growth mindset and that that real uh just life affirming desire for more to get outside your comfort zone to override that but in practical terms it's something that i've had to work on every single day for my life really and yeah. I know that you wanted to talk a little bit about ruminations today. And so yeah. that's, that's been very related to fear. And mm. so I've had to create new affirmations in my head. Mm. I've just, I've just had to almost brainwash myself. I, that's got a negative connotation, that term, yeah. but I really, <laughs> I really kind of have had to just brainwash myself into, you know, knowing that I'm not going to die. Everything's going to be okay. And, you know, laughing about it too is a great tactic. If you can just find some humor around it, then everything lightens up a bit. There's not as much fear. You're like, ah, and, and just a beginner's mindset helps a lot. If you're looking to transform Mm -hmm. and you want to overcome that fear, just adapting the mindset that you have to start somewhere and you're going to learn there is no failure that can help because we Mm -hmm. get caught up sometimes in our own pride. And I think the older that we get, the easier that it is to slip into that pride. And I, Lord knows I've done it. But you know, you can look at someone that has a successful podcast like you, right? And then someone just thinks, oh, why would I even start? I'm way behind, you know, mm-hmm. and I should be further along where I am now because I'm X age. And then this spirals into what will everyone think? And there's yep. there's your fear. And so yeah. if you can just say, I've got to start somewhere, and this is something I'd like to do, and I think it would be fun, then you're pushing down that fear talk, that self-talk, and lifting into that growth space. And mm-hmm. 
having fun with it, right? That's the beginner's mm-hmm. mindset. It's fun. Like my mm-hmm. daughter just took up knitting and she just is like, I'm going to knit. And she's just knitted some crazy looking thing that was just a, a blob of yarn, really. She's 14. And she did it with her. I go, do you have knitting needles? And she was like, no, I just use my fingers. And I was like, wow, <laughs> you know? And she's like, I just, and she's just set a modest goal. She wants to knit a sweater someday. And she's just got this blob, but then she actually knitted something using pencils last night. And I was like, wow, mm. I'm just so impressed. But like a lot of times we won't let ourselves even make those mistakes because we're scared of looking stupid or mm-hmm. like looking like a beginner who doesn't know what they're doing. But it's so beautiful if we can just accept it, no matter whether it's a startup or whether it's knitting or whether it's guitar. Mm-hmm. You know, like when we started playing guitar, when I started playing guitar and we started the band, I was with some other girlfriends you know, we just, we were in it together, which helped, Mm -hmm. but also we just were able to laugh at it some and just say, yeah, we're just beginners. So what? So what? And you know what? People showed up to see us. We would pack stubs. We would pack some of these clubs in Austin (laughs) and people would show up because they were like, we got to see what's happening here. And then they would, I remember one, uh, our, our keyboard and singers, husband watched us once early on and he was like, y'all don't suck. And we were like, <laughs> yes, you know? And sometimes it's just like, do I, how bad do I suck? Cause as a beginner, the more you can accept that you're going to suck as a beginner, the better off you'll be because begin the beginning effort is never great. It's the ball of yarn, you know, it's, you don't suck. And it's like, okay, or you do suck, you know? And so the more times you can start something and then just realize like, it's okay. I'm Mm -hmm. fine and have fun with it, the better off you'll be every single time. And that's not to say I don't still get scared. I do. I do. But, um, and especially with my age now, because now I'm like, oh Mm -hmm. gosh, if I start that now, (laughs) I'll be what, 70 when I complete it or something, you know? (laughs) But, um, but you know what? I just, I keep, I keep working to let it go. Just let it go. It's a practice. Well, I think long winded answer for you, but no, I love it. You have, it's such great advice and it is true. We have to have fun with it and you have to just be willing to make fun of yourself in the moment and just go for it. And it sounds like you almost throw in a little bit of like intention mixed with throwing caution to the wind. Like you're intending something to happen, but you have to also be willing just to throw it out there and not be perfect. But I do know, like, and I've talked to a lot of people about this it comes with age. We're not, you know, in our minds, we're so like wired to be like, we're not beginners. I mean, I'm 41, you know, I'm not a beginner at 41. I've already, you know, I've already started all these things. I should just be diving into what I do. And I think we get so trapped in this idea that we can't change, whether that's because it's uncomfortable or whether it's because the outside world doesn't want to see us in a new way or, or we are too afraid. I don't know what it is, but like, do you find that, that like that age, that age piece, like can put a big hurdle in front of you? Yeah. Well, there were two things in there that I really liked. Okay. So first let's talk about that age thing. So you're 41, you say I'm not a beginner, but you know what? Go talk to someone at 81 because they're going to be like, Oh my God, you have so much time. Even to me, I'm 10 years older than you, but I think of all the things I did in the last 10 years, and it was a lot. It was a lot. I literally released like four albums. I wrote two books. I got a divorce. I moved, (laughs) you know, like there's a lot in there. Started two podcasts. I mean, so, you know, there's a ton of stuff that you can accomplish. So Mm -hmm. it depends on your perspective. And I try to exercise this myself. I try to give a little fast forward in my brain and I go, Mm -hmm. oh, okay, let's pretend I'm I'm 65 for a second. And I'm going to look back at myself at 51 and go, God, you hot bitch. What were you (laughs) thinking? You looked good. You, you had so much time, you know, so I play with these shifts sometimes Mm -hmm. because I hear people that are 30 that think they're way behind and you're like, Oh my Lord, no, you're not. Mm -hmm. And so I play with that perspective and that relativity, because I think it can really push us a little bit more into like, oh yeah, okay. Maybe Mm -hmm. I'm not as behind as I think I am, or maybe I can't start that new thing. Mm -hmm. So that's one exercise that I enjoy doing because I know when I, from now look back at my 41 year old self and the fear that I faced then, if I could give myself a pep talk, I would be like, 
relax. You're okay. <laughs> you have a lot to happen before you even turn 50. You know, 40s are great. I, I mean, like I would give myself all these pep talks. So sometimes yeah. I just try to play with future and past a little bit mm. and it's fun. And I mean, is time even real anyway? But that's another discussion. Courtney. <laughs> yeah. Are we, are, are we living in like three different timelines, you know, how a, an infinite amount of timelines as we speak, you know? So who yeah, knows? I, who, I, knows? I, who knows? Exactly. Who knows? Yes. Yes. But the other thing I wanted to touch on was you brought up intentionality with caution to the wind, right? With just mm-hmm. throwing caution to the wind. And yeah. I, I love that you brought that up because yes, we can be intentional, but can't hold on too tight. So you can set Mm. your intentions. So, you know, the holding on too tight sets yourself up for not being happy. You Mm -hmm. know, if, and, and we can shift our intentions into something that's not like I intend for this album to be a hit album, right? Mm -hmm. That's holding on pretty tight and it's something out of my control. But if Mm -hmm. I say I am intending for this to come from my heart. Mm. Well, not only am I setting myself up for success, but I'm just opening up to whatever that brings. And so with each podcast too, I just open up the conversation. I just say, you yeah. know, my intention is to have my words guided as beautifully as possible and that they reach someone who needs to hear it. And I don't know if that mm. someone's going to be now or 10 years from now, you know, mm. but it doesn't matter. Just being able to release our attachment from our intention. So there's a big difference between attachment and intention. So if you're very Mm -hmm. attached to the outcome, that's where I've gotten the most lessons is letting go of my attachment to outcome because I really don't know the plan. I don't know how the puzzle pieces are going to fit together down the road. And so having my intention, but releasing any attachment has been a massive lesson in my life and a massive liberation because it frees you into the present moment. It frees you into infinite possibility because we think we know best, but I never would have predicted I would be right here right now talking to you, you know, dating who I'm dating, you know, the whole thing. And so just let it go. Intention and letting go. And I think letting go, somebody asked me the other day and she was like, oh, she said, what is your podcast about? And I'm like, optimizing life, you know? And (laughs) she said, well, what's the key do you think? You know? And I was like, okay, good question. And so I said, you know, for me, I think right now it's just letting go. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't necessarily mean letting go of your intention, but your intention Mm -hmm. could be letting go. (laughs) So there's, there's, I just turned it around, but Yeah. You know, my, it's just, it's just this constant process of letting go and allowing whatever is meant to come in to come in. I mean, I think you're speaking to me. Like you said, you know, you don't know where your words are going to hit. Obviously I'm (laughs) I'm in a moment right now today that like, I need to hear that. And, and that is something. And I think it mixes in with the whole conversation, the whole concept of fear and letting go. You know, we try and control and we set our intentions and we hold on to them so strong because we, put so much attachment to that outcome where, like you said, we don't have the control and the universe, God, spirit, whatever, whatever term you want to call it has a plan in mind and we have to release and surrender. And I know that's talked about a ton when it comes to things like manifestation, but we also need to talk about that with intention because I almost think manifest manifestation and intentions are almost like cousins. They're very similar. I do too. Yes, I agree. They are very similar. And there's, I think that letting go for manifestation too. I don't know. I think I'm in a phase right now where I'm just, I don't, I don't know. And like, manifestation's gotten a little too clingy to me. Like something Mm -hmm. about it has moved into a lack mindset in some ways for me. So I've had Mm -hmm. to let that go too. (laughs) I've been Mm -hmm. reading a great book by Tosha Silver. It's called, It's Not Your Money. And it's a, it's really, it's not just applicable to money, but it's about anything that we want in life and just understanding that it's not really ours and just, and just this constant process of letting go and staying in a space of gratitude and Mm -hmm. creating space for what's to come. And and I, I just love that philosophy. I'm yeah, really working hard to just let go all the time. And one day I was real wrapped up in my manifestation brain, I think. And yeah. I sat down to meditate and I have these little angel cards and they each have one mm-hmm. word on them. 
And so I, I'll draw one, I'll draw three downstairs at my altar down there. But when I come to meditate, sometimes I'll draw one just for a little bit of intentionality. Mm -hmm. And so one day I was just like, I need some, I need some direction. I need some intention. I need something because I feel so attached to everything. Mm -hmm. And what is it? And I drew a card and in that, in that deck, I have them in a bowl. In that deck are a few blank ones. And I drew a blank one. And I was like, well, is I just started laughing, right? I know. Yes. And I was like, isn't, isn't that poignant? <laughs> of course. Like, of course. Like, you know what? Just let go of it all. I still have it sitting out. Like, so that's been my focus. I'm just like, you know what? I don't know. Even when I'm like manifesting or trying to manifest, I'm doing air quotes there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't really know. I, you know, I think I know, but I don't know. And so- yeah. Anyway, I'm just constantly trying to trying to let go, but I do I do agree that that manifesting and that intentionality are related. You know, yeah. they and I think just watch what you're intending closely because words mm -hmm. matter and our thoughts matter. And mm -hmm. if it's coming from a place I don't have this yet, then there's a place to check in and think, yeah. okay, like where am I coming from there? Well, I mean, I don't think you could have scripted that better, getting that blank card. It's like, no, you need to let go. You need to go within. You need to listen to yourself. We're not giving you the right. answers. But even even like the whole concept of letting go when it comes to manifestations or intentions, I felt the same way because, you know, I, I have always talked about like journaling being my superpower. I can write it down and everything will come like whatever I put down on paper will manifest in some way, shape or form. But lately... It hasn't been working so much like that for me. So I've really stepped into the whole concept of switching that, like you said, that, that mindset, the words and the thoughts. And when we're asking and please, I need, or I want, or this or that, we're putting our thoughts in that place of lack. You're putting your, you're asking for something that may not be right for you. And it's more of, I've been turning it around. Like you kind of talked about to that gratitude, like, thank you for this. Thank you for so much of this, trying to build that in. So. That helps also, I feel like, in that releasing as in trying to control the things that you want or you need or you're hoping for and allowing more of like, I'm grateful for all that you have given me and whatever more is to come. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm trying to do it even from a, more of an intentional place of just feeling it. Like rather mm. than even like having words attached, I'm like, what is that feeling behind those words? Yeah. And so I'll just sit there sometimes and think like, that's just this contentment. It's just this mm. happy, peaceful space. I mean, when I sit in just a space of gratitude, that's, so if you're an Abraham Hicks fan, I am. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's that, that's that open vortex that I think mm -hmm. that they talk about. And so not that I'm trying for that, but I'm, I was just curious. I really just came from a curious place. Like, what is that? If I took the words away, what am I feeling? And mm. so love, peace, presence, contentment, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that it boils it down. And so if we have to put words to it, and so yeah. it's just this like, feeling of open-heartedness and goodness. And that's where we're just inviting more in. So mm -hmm. while the journaling, I think, has a lot of value, of course, as I'm sure you've experienced, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's just writing it down, letting it, letting it go, writing it down, yeah. letting it go, you know, and then you sit in that space and then, you know, you've just put it all out there. And so mm -hmm. who knows? Then you're just sort of like, this or something better. Have you heard people yeah. say that? Like this or mm -hmm. something better. I like that phrase a lot. Like, and mm -hmm. I forget to use it sometimes, but yeah, it's a nice one. Mm -hmm. But even like you're talking about and being in gratitude, I even think that's a word kind of like manifestation that gets thrown out there so much, you know, like, yeah. It gets, it gets abused in the way is like, you know, it becomes routine and this like, oh, well, I'm grateful for my kids. I'm grateful for my house. I'm grateful for my family. You know, like you're not actually feeling it. You're going through the emotions. So I really, really love the word uh, contentment, like you're talking about being mm -hmm. content. And I can remember as far back as, you know, back when I was single and, you know, I found my husband and got married and had my children later in life. Um, and I used to always say it wasn't even that I was looking for that happiness um, because that's just like a fleeting emotion. You know, I was looking for that contentment because when you're content, you can have the ups and downs of life, but you know that every, you have a peace about you. And I think that is really like 
more of the feeling. I, I get when people say they're grateful and I know what we mean by grateful, but I think there's more to it to, than that. Just like understanding that peace that comes with contentment. Yeah, absolutely. I like it too. I like it a lot just because it really can't happen anywhere other than the present moment. I feel like, mm. you know, just it, it makes us just right now in this moment, just content having this conversation and being right here with whatever it is, <laughs> you know, and I'm laughing just because like right before we recorded this, Justin and I had a little argument, you know, and I'm like, was I in contentment right then? Right. You know, no. And then yes, you know, it's like, it, it is those ups and downs and those fluctuations. And I'm, I know I'm going to be okay. I know we're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. It was just a thing that happened. And yeah. so, you know, we'll talk about it. So there is like a deeper contentment Mm -hmm. And I know maybe I'm just hormonal or something. So, you know, <laughs> so those things just happen, but it, you know, that, like you said, it is just this, this peacefulness and, um, and that I think that's what we're all just trying to get to like some mm -hmm. sort of just happiness. That's what people are searching for, but we, everything's most, me, okay. I'd say a lot of the time. If you just tap into this moment right now, just this second, everything's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is okay. Exactly. And so, you know, it's just, again, back to that fear and worry and, and pulling us out of the present moment that gets us out of contentment and that gets us out of alignment and mm -hmm. alignment with whatever it is that we're desiring to grow into in our lives. Or, and so I have to just pull myself back and it's a constant practice. It's just a constant practice. So yeah, like what do you do to bring yourself back into that present moment? Because obviously, like we talked about, you know, the anxiety and the depression and the thoughts and the lack of self-worth and, you know, all these things that are outside of us or these thoughts that we let run wild and that rumination, that's taking us out of that present moment, you know, when we think about it. But then when we come back into us and say, you know, I'm okay right now, everything is great. My children are happy. My husband's happy. My house is here, you know, like yeah, we can all find something to be like, I'm uh, for the most part, like you said, I mean, there are moments, maybe you're not completely safe in the moment, but, but for the most of us and the majority of us in the time, like you're okay. Everything is okay. So why do we allow ourselves to go into those places and how do we bring ourselves back into the present? I mean, I think that's just part of our human experience and that's why know. it happens. You know, I mean, our brains just seem to want to go searching those things out. And I don't know if it's ego or if it's just the way we're wired. So for me, mm -hmm. it's a constant rewiring process. What do we do to bring ourselves back? Well, I have um, numerous practices and I don't do them all every day. I think I went through a time where I was pretty diligent, where mm -hmm. I, you know, would always every day exercise, meditate, do some breath work, put my legs up a wall, <laughs> do a mirror practice, draw my cards every day, do some Reiki, you know, like there's an, there's numerous things, but like there mm -hmm. are some really, really, really basic things we can do. One, mm -hmm. like have you showered today? You know, what I mean? like it can be so simple. Like, have you showered? Like, because so, sometimes when I'm not, I'm like, oh my gosh, like I could stand to just clean myself up and then instantly I'm doing better. What have I mm -hmm. eaten? You know, did I sleep last night? Checking in with some of your basic things, right? And so if mm -hmm. those are met, then you can get a little wider and say, okay, let's go this next circle of, of things to check in with. Have I meditated? Oh, I haven't in two weeks. All right. Mm -hmm. That could be something, you know? So there's just like checking in with things that, you, and they're just, have I been out in nature? You know, like there's like these yeah. really, really simple things. And we look for things like, oh my gosh, I better start taking this supplement I saw advertised on Instagram. And I better <laughs> um, go buy the new book by, you know, name, insert the name, you yeah. know, all these things. Like, oh, I listen to this next podcast. Blah. And no, you know what? No. Instead, you go, oh, wait, did I have alcohol three days ago? Huh, that could affect my dopamine right now and my serotonin levels, and that could make me miserable. Or, you know, did I have gluten? I, you know, there's like, yeah, oh, it's, it's so much simpler than we make it. And that's been a huge thing for me. Like, if I can just get back to, okay, I'll take my dog for a walk, I'll eat something healthy, I'll drink water. 
oh, hi. Yes. You know, like, oh, you had three coffees. Like, you know, of course you're spiraling down a shame cycle. So, you know, so it's like really basic things that, that we want to find a magic pill for rather than mm. just doing the basic things. At least, at least I have too many times to count. And so anyway, like though that's how we get back to it. And then aside from that, yes, meditation. Yes. I have countless post-it notes around my house uh, that just say affirmations, right? I love those. Mm -hmm. I do a, a self-love practice in the mirror. I tell, I say the Reiki mantra and I say, I love you to myself. And I spend a moment looking at myself and thanking myself and just being in a loving space like I would do with my child or yeah. my significant other. And so, you know, those are the things that, that can bring us back into a better headspace and remembering this too shall pass. Is mm. there a better phrase anywhere, right? Because whether whatever's going on, the highs, the lows, the wins, the perceived losses, the, they all pass. They all mm -hmm. pass. The good moments too, you know, the orgasmic bliss. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to pay the bills later, you know? Like, yeah. So yeah. everything passes. And so I think that's a very important way to view life. Like, just like you're looking at the sky, the clouds blow on by. I think Ram Das talks about that. You know, the gray mm -hmm. skies, there's blue behind it. It blows, yeah. it blows by. And so remembering these things, personally, I need reminders of those things. I have to remind mm -hmm. myself, oh yeah, I should go out and walk my dog. I should get some water, you know? So for me, it takes diligent daily habits to get these things ingrained in me, like so hardcore that I'm able to remember them. Mm -hmm. So that's probably one of the number one things that pulls me out is giving myself reminders, whether it's on my phone or mm -hmm. my daily checklist or, you know, a, a post-it note in the house. So it, however you need to remember it, if you forget, that's okay. You get to remember now. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's part of my process. Isn't that funny though, that we have to remind ourselves to come back to the basics and do things like eating healthy or taking a shower or drinking water. I mean, I find it funny that I even have to remind myself to breathe. You know, yeah. there's a part of you that like holds your breath. And, and I've talked about it before. It's like when I, I usually notice it when I'm driving and I'll be at a stoplight and I'm realizing like, I've been holding my breath. Like I need to take a breath, but I also love how you were talking about, you know, looking at yourself in the mirror and talking to yourself like you were a child, because, you know, I have two young kids. So, you know, most of my day is about taking care of them, making sure they have that water, giving them love and, and things like that. And we abandon ourselves. We leave ourselves out of that. Like even, like you said, showering, I can go days without showering. I have a two-year-old and an almost four-year-old, you know, it's, it's a lot to handle. And so, like, I'll be like, wow, what was the last day I actually washed my hair? So I mean, <laughs> finding that time, but then also finding that compassion for self. Like, I feel like we are just so ingrained to not have that self-love. Totally. I, I've just been reading about inner child and mm -hmm. I did an episode on this too. And like, it just occurred to me, I mean, what if you just had a little imaginary child there too with your kids, you know, a little imaginary yeah. Courtney. And so you're like, oh wait, Courtney needs some water too, you know, <laughs> or oh whatever goodness, it yes. is, you know, like maybe, maybe that's a trick to it because it was talking about just taking care of that child, that inner child. And I've never mm -hmm. been particularly into inner child work. Um, I don't feel super connected to that part of myself. And so maybe that's all the more reason to do it. I don't know, yeah. but, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> there's something to unpack there. I'm sure, but probably, <laughs> probably, but, but instead I just do try to tap into my own needs and think mm -hmm. about, you know, what I am in need of at that moment and, and teaching and having kids is a great lesson in that because you really are mm -hmm. putting yourself last, but you know that you're a better mom when you do take care of yourself the best you can, you know, like when you do get some exercise, get some nature, hydrate, get some sleep, you mm -hmm. know, you know, you're mm -hmm. not going to snap at your kids and then feel bad or something like that, you know, so which we've all been there, right? So mm -hmm. I'm a mother to two as well, but mine are older now. So I well, sleep now, but sort of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know. 
you have different you have different reasons that probably keep you up at night with your children <laughs> yeah. as they get older. Exactly. Than, than the fact that they don't want to sleep. But even like we were saying, like you're talking about with that inner child or seeing that little that little Courtney with my, you know, the kids and things like that. I have actually been doing a little bit of inner child work. And what has been pointed out to me is like my daughter tends to be really clingy. She's always wanting to cuddle and hug me and this and that. And I feel like our children are brought into this world to mirror and to show us things, whether we're lacking or teaching lessons, like you said, and all those good things. And I've talked to my husband about some of the inner child work I've done. And so I get frustrated sometimes, you know, when you're having children cling to you all the time, you just want that personal space. And when she's like on top of me, rolling around, hugging me nonstop, like, well, like literally in my face, my husband's like, remember, that's you. She's mirroring you. She's showing you what you wanted or you needed at four years old. And when you can look at it from that perspective, it changes it. All of a sudden that frustration goes away that like, give me my space. And then I just like hug her and hold her harder because it's kind of like, okay, is this what I was missing at this point or whatever it is, you know, and it's nothing that I can remember, but it's really interesting how our children come in to show us these things. Oh, I love that you're thinking of it like that. Mm -hmm. Wow. What a blessing. And what a, what a gift of perspective from your husband. That's so cool. Wow. I, I'm so impressed by that. And I had one of those clingy ones too. And <laughs> and now that she's 14, she just pushes me away a lot and doesn't yeah. want it. Unless she does, you know, but it's just so I get it. And, but I never thought of it like that. And what a beautiful thing to even just, just play again, just play with it, right? Just play with the mm -hmm. perspective shift. Just play with like, maybe it is what I needed. And then maybe mm -hmm. you imagine giving yourself that too, as well as her. and then. It shifts something inside yourself. I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, like that's an invitation to get intentional about it and to play with it and get curious about it and see where there's room for growth and to step into, I don't know, something you didn't even realize needed maybe some love, some healing, right. you know, how cool is that? Wow. But, and I yeah, it it is. It is when you think about that. And it's kind of like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yeah. And, and, and shifting your perspective. So I see how, I mean, it sounds like that has been a constant for you is like learning how to shift that perspective, whether it's, you know, how we're talking about this with the children or, you know, shifting your perspective to your older self to look back where you are now. I mean, that seems like a really powerful tool. Well, thanks. <laughs> I think it has. I think it has. I think that, go, that w along with that perspective shifting, and looking at things different ways is like just a compassionate attitude. And I'm mm -hmm. constantly striving not to judge. I have a big mm -hmm. part of me that's just like everybody's doing the best they can with the tools they got, with what they got right now. And so yeah, just stop judging them. And, and so I, that in turn helps me stop judging myself so hard. And because we're all our own worst critic for the, mm -hmm. for mostly. And so that loosens me up on others and on myself. And and it can really shift your perspective because many times we even will judge somebody, but if we could shift our perspective, we wouldn't judge them the same way. You know, mm -hmm. how many times have you seen somebody and maybe on social media and then you meet them in real life and you're like, huh, I actually really like them. I think I was judging yeah. them out of my distorted perspective, distorted perception of their life. And maybe it was coming from something I'm jealous of, or maybe it was mm -hmm. coming from me thinking I'm better than them or whatever it is. So it was coming from some unfulfilled ego place. And instead we're able to drop our judgments and that in itself is such a perspective shift. And so I do, I do love that. And, you know, even with you and the inner child, like we're able to drop mm -hmm. maybe what we think we know about it and shift into, I don't know, which is a totally right. different perspective, right? You don't know what you don't know. So yeah. Yeah. Well, how, why do you think that we're just so judgmental? Why do you think we're so <laughs> all geared to being judgmental? Because we all are, mm -hmm. even if we're conscious of it and trying not to be, like you said, like you see someone and we instantly make a judgment. Why do yeah, you think we're we do. wired that way? Oh gosh. I wish I had the right answer because I bet there's a sign. I bet there's some psychologist out there, somebody that has that figured out. Um, yeah. Why do I think we're wired to judge others? 
I, I feel like we have an innate sense of figuring out where we are in the pack mm. and that we're not going to be left behind. And so mm. if we're judging that, okay, they're there, I'm here, uh, then, okay, I'm in an okay place. So I'm not going to be like that, like lizard brain or something is like, I'm not going to be left behind by the pack. I'm mm. doing okay. So maybe there's some sort of need for community and acceptance. And mm. so by judging, we're making sure that we're okay. Mm. And so I, that's just a, a theory I'm throwing out there on, on, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the on the fly, just there. putting you on the spot. Yep. I know yep. what I just kind of heard <laughs> when I was, when you were talking, I was like, I'm thinking in my mind, it's a survival mechanism, maybe because it, like, precisely. Yes, precisely. You're not getting left behind. It's a survival mechanism. Yep. So you are inherently like, okay, with the pack, you're going to be able to eat and survive yeah. instead of being like left, you know, in the desert to die. <laughs> so, I mean, essentially like everything we're talking about coming back to our authentic self, coming back to your inner self, like finding that self love, it all comes back to such basic things like drinking water yeah. or getting quiet or going outside, you know, and technology and everything has pushed us so far past that. I think we truly just forget this, like the basics. The basics. And it's not anything you have to spend money on. It's not any, except maybe a bed, but yeah. it, you know, it's not anything that you have to go out and seek. It's all within you. And that's one of my main messages that I've learned. And that to me is the key to this contentment. The key to accessing a more glowing self is mm -hmm. being your shiniest self is that it's all right here within you. And so mm -hmm. if you can just relax and trust that truth, we don't have to judge and we don't have to, because mm -hmm. we're okay. We're not fighting for our survival in this very moment. You know, we're not, mm -hmm. you know, like from thousands of years ago that we're, we've got deep in our DNA, those things we can relax about. And so we have it all within us. We have the capacity to be at peace right here, right now with the most simple of tools. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think the more we can see it in ourselves, the more we could see that in others. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That and vice versa. The more you see it in others, the more you can maybe give yourself some compassion too. But yes, like the, the more we can see that in ourselves and see, oh gosh, you know, I'm busy judging and all that. I've, I just judge that person. And if you can just get honest with yourself about a few of those things and, and I'm, I'm clinging for survival, I'm pissed off yeah. about rejection. I'm this, I'm that. Get honest with yourself about some of those things and have a sense of humor about it a little bit. Like, oh, okay. Then you, mm -hmm. when you see somebody else going through that, you're like, oh, who knows what they're going through? You just, you just invite the whole thing with a lot more compassion and you see them in a more compassionate way. And you're able to just be like, Hey, they're just playing the hand they were dealt and having maybe a day. I don't know. We, we, my, Justin and I were looking at houses this last mm -hmm. weekend and we went to look at this one house and <laughs> one of the bathrooms this is so crazy and weird. One of the bathrooms did not have a toilet in it. Okay. So I don't know if you can even call it a bathroom. Anyway, okay. I had a shower, I had a sink, <laughs> it had no toilet. And I was like, and the guy was kind of like really clinging to us. Like he was following us around as we looked at the house, which is annoying. But anyway, but whatever. And so anyway, I look in there and I'm like, there's what, wait, what? There's no toilet in here. The guy like, and, and, and right at that same time in the same room, there was a closet with no door, like a big closet. And I go, then this closet doesn't have a door. I'm like, what? and I go, is, are they going to put a door on this closet? And he goes, no, this is the way, this is the way it is. What you see is what you get. And I'm like, <laughs> what? And so I'm like, okay, what? And I'm kind of laughing about it. Cause I'm like, this is weird. And you know what? He turned on us. He, he didn't, he just clearly put up a wall and didn't like us anymore. Right. Basically it was just over us. And when we left, Justin was like, man, that guy just turned on us after you said that. And I was like, you know what? Maybe we were like the 10th people to tour that house and he's really trying to rent it. He didn't make those dis dumb ass decisions. Yeah. And you know, oh, I judge the decisions. I don't know what their process was for making those decisions. Okay. So maybe those decisions were made for a reason that I don't right. know. But anyway, they, maybe they weren't this guy's decision. I go, maybe, maybe that was his 10th time today. And he's just 
heard that phrase and he just hit a wall. And I just, I ended up just giving that guy so much compassion. I don't know what he's going through, but when we're able to come from that perspective and shift into that, then you're just like, you let those things go so much more easily. And I, or we could have stewed about it, you know, and been like, what a dick or, you know, whatever. <laughs> and, but that's not my perspective anymore. I don't do that anymore. Instead, I'm just like, who knows? Or maybe it's something completely unrelated. Maybe he, you know, was having a maybe his mom's dying. I don't know. You know, like yeah. you just don't know. And so I'm just able to just let that go so much more quickly now. And again, that's a habit too. And you just end up like mm. not judging, letting go. And, and that's, and that's a bigger, from a bigger umbrella perspective, that's an intention, right? That's like totally. your intention is to just keep letting go. Like I was saying, just let go. And so anyway, that's that story. I <laughs> absolutely love that because you know, I will, I'll do that. I'll hold on to something that's going on in someone else's life that they told me that story. And I'll just like to continue to bring it up and talk about it in my house. And it's like, why am I holding on to this? Like, let it go. It has no impact whatsoever on my life. But it is really funny that you talk about judging when it comes to looking at houses. Cause I mean, isn't that like one of the, <laughs> one of the biggest invitations to judge is when you're touring I mean, someone's house, like, or looking for a house of your own. Like we all do it. We all do it. Like, why did they decorate <laughs> like this? Why did they do that? Like, there's so much judgment when you walk into someone's house or to buy, sell, mm -hmm. rent, whatever. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe that's a space I haven't fully let go of judgment yet. <laughs> Cause I, am I just really think, like who made this decision and why? I Come think on. It's, I think it's natural because I mean, even, you know, we just moved to Tennessee like a year and a half ago. And, and, you know, before that we're, you know, looking at houses online left and right. And we still get, for some reason, we still get all like the house, um, alerts on our phone. And my husband and I are like, look what they did here. You know, we're judging people all the time, especially <laughs> when it comes to houses. It's kind of fun because it seems harmless. It is, but, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I mean, it, it, it is a practice that maybe, maybe we can curb that judgment there too, to help practice letting go. Right. I don't know. Maybe, maybe so. Maybe so. I get the fun part of it though. It yeah. is, but then you go like, okay, am I spending time in a judgmental space that's really serving me? Yeah, maybe not, you know, in the moment. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it, when you encounter something like no toilet in a bathroom, you're like, uh, who, I mean, that's uh, weird. who wasn't thinking here? <laughs> it was weird. I mean, come that's on. weird. So, you know, but you know what? <laughs> Uh, I, uh, that person who made that decision, you know what, I'm giving them compassion and you're, you mm -hmm. are too. So I, I, I don't know. There's always more space. Maybe it's just a way to show you that there's other spaces where we can drop our judgments. Right. And so to just yeah. be aware of them. Right. And so anyway, but <laughs> yes. well, I, think, I think even like the story, it, it helps us look at, you know, this inner work and this connection to self and, and having compassion for ourselves, it doesn't always have to be so serious too. I think we can find some levity in it and some fun in it. And even like you said, <clears throat> excuse me, when you were like starting out as a band, you know, you're just going out there and having fun. Like if we can give ourselves a little bit of that, it makes it, that fear go away. It gives you that opportunity to show up with intention, but not make it so it has to be this way. It gives you that freedom a little bit. I think the fun does. Oh, it really does. I mean, the more I focus on fun, the better life is because yeah. I am very much a Virgo type that likes things in their place, that likes yeah. things put away, likes people to do things a certain way. And, and that can just suck the fun right out of life. And so, yeah. um, so I have to focus on allowing myself to just have fun and let it be and everything doesn't, have, I can do it later. You know, it's just not getting all wound up in those sorts of things. Like right now, I know that my bed's not made and that's bothering, me. you know, like, and I'm like, <laughs> why? That should, no, don't let that bother you. So I'll do it later. You know, it's fun. It's no big deal. And so again, there's space there to not judge myself. There's space there to relax. There's space there mm -hmm. to, you know, there's all these things, right? So everything can be a learning lesson if we allow it to be. Maybe that's yeah. the point. And yeah. whether it's um, judgment about a house or it's just, just little things that happen, little 
the, the tiniest thing that invites us to have fun, your kids tugging on your leg and you need to yeah. answer an email, you know, but you can set down your phone. And I don't know if you've read My Year of Yes by Shonda mm. Rhimes. Have you read that? No, no. She, mm. Shonda Rhimes, uh, she is the showrunner for many big shows like Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, and she spent a year exploring saying yes. And it's really just an insightful and incredible book, but she does have a section with her little kids when they're tugging on her and asking her to spend time with them, you know, and she just, she just caught the lessons in those moments. Mm. And Every single moment, we don't need some big ayahuasca experience to teach us the lessons. Literally, life is teaching us lessons every single moment. So yeah. are we going to open ourselves up and actually learn the lesson? Or are we just going to have to be retaught it and retaught it and retaught it, and then go do ayahuasca and then still be retaught it? You know? yeah. And so I think that um, the more I'm just intentional and paying attention to life, the more I'm able to say, ah, here's a space, here's a space to let go, here's a space to let go, here's a space mm -hmm. to have more fun. And then it, it, suddenly you are in a practice of being happier and more content in this very moment. Yeah, because we do. We get so wrapped up in our day and going about everything and making sure, like you said, everything's in the right place or going according to a plan and that's where we lose that opportunity to be present and see these lessons. So they're just going to keep getting thrown back at us until we finally get hit over the head enough times and learn them. But, but that is beautiful if we could take that time to just really open ourselves up to them in every moment of the day. And that comes back to being present. It really does. It really does. And we didn't get into rumination. So, you know, no. uh, I wanted to just touch a little more on that um, yeah. because you did bring that up as something you wanted mm -hmm. to talk about. Um, I was a ruminator from as far back as I can remember, mm -hmm. and I didn't know that that was a thing. I didn't know that's what I was doing. I would lay in bed when I was young and think the same thoughts over and over. And when we do that, of course, neural pathways get ingrained in our brains. Mm -hmm. So the neurons just fall into the same path. And so mm -hmm. we have to consciously break those patterns and pathways in order to break ruminations. And I just didn't know that, again, you don't know what you don't know. I didn't even know ruminations were a thing. And so right. I struggled with that for a very long time, especially when I went to bed at night. That was mm -hmm. the time I would really go over and over and over the same just bullshit things. And so, sorry, I hope I can oh, say it's okay. language. You're um, fine. Thank you. <laughs> um, and, and so one day I was reading something and it said something about ruminations. And I, I was like, what? Oh my gosh, this is me. And I was mm -hmm. like, this is what I do. I wish I could remember what I was reading too. I don't. And the next day I go to the year, and someone invited me to the year anniversary of a ketamine clinic. This was in 2019. And I met the owner and she was just a bright, shiny light. And I was like, mm -hmm. whoa, I love her. I love you. I met her. She was talking about the things that the ketamine treatment can help with. And she was just listing off things, PTSD, addiction, mm -hmm. depression, suicidal ideation, rumination. And I was like, what? Rumination? <laughs> I was like, I'm interested. And so I wanted to have her on the podcast. So I said, let me just try one of these so I can speak experientially about it. Mm -hmm. And I tried one. And the very next day, I started having thoughts, new thoughts about an old situation that I'd never had before, that were completely <laughs> logical thoughts, that were like thoughts that literally you would say to me if I to told you the situation. And I would say to my daughter, I mean, like, and I was like, so struck by it. I thought, why have I never thought that before? That doesn't make any sense. And I thought, why am I thinking it today? So for me, there was a practice, like a medicinal component to mm -hmm. wiping my slate because it just felt like, it felt like I've been tracing a circle in sand on a table over and over. And it felt like someone just came and blew away all the sand, just all gone. And wow. I was like, wow, I know. And so I called her and I was like, I got to do a whole series of these because apparently it's really helping me. And it was a huge turning yeah. point. Over the next year, I did do a series of ketamine treatments. And I'm not saying this is right for everyone. Ketamine treatments are pretty intense. Yeah. They're pretty dark. They're not my favorite thing in the world. 
but I learned to manage them pretty well. I learned that I need music with no minor notes and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I, and I, and I put a lot, I made my own affirmations for it too, that I would listen to. And so I reprogrammed myself in that way and I don't do it anymore. I don't need it anymore because I really worked to reprogram. I know. Wow. Right. And yeah. so you can do it with repetition. And I think that's why so many people are drawn to affirmations because you're like, whoa, really? I could actually think something positive instead of like, I'm a mm -hmm. loser. And so, yeah. So the it, it, it's just getting into this way of thinking positive things versus negative things, things that are uplifting and manifesting good mm -hmm. rather than the opposite. And so that's, that's been a real process for me and something that I had to break free of. And that was my path to it. Do I recommend it for everyone? Of course not. I don't know what everyone's path is, but I do know that there are some things like that and other psychedelics. I had a bit of a psychedelic journey that year and <laughs> I did a bunch of other stuff too, but I really yeah. do credit the ketamine. I really do credit the ketamine with being the thing that helped change my brain patterns, my neural pathways. And so that's been, that's been huge. And not that I don't still experience them some, but I fall asleep now. One of my practices that I stepped into too, is when I fall asleep, I just say, I love myself. Life loves me. Mm. I keep it real simple because mm -hmm. I forget otherwise. Cause we forget, we got too much in our brain. Yeah. We're moms. And totally. so, uh, yeah. And so I just say, I love myself. Life loves me. And I just repeat that in my head. And it was hard at first, but if you can get something simple that you can just get on repeat a little bit, maybe even make it your home screen on your phone or something like that. I do have some affirmations that are home screens on my phone. Just really like whatever you're looking at all the time, put it there, put it on a post-it while you're doing dishes. I don't know. And just repeat it in your head and it will start to sink in. It will start to outweigh the other thoughts and ruminations that you have. The more you do it, that's, it will. It will. I can tell you that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, I've heard, I've heard of ketamine treatments and what they can do for you. Um, I've never thought of it for rumination. And, you know, it's funny that you say that because, you know, for me with the rumination, it's like, I had it for so long. I didn't know it was something. I thought that was normal. You know, you almost think it's normal. I thought it was that's normal. All you know. Yeah. I, I can and totally then, relate. Yes. And then people look at you crazy. Like, why can't you let this go? Why do you keep talking about this? And, you know, it's like, why don't you do that? Like, why aren't you replaying every scenario over and over and over and over and over and over and get, you know, in your head. And I went mm -hmm. through years and years of therapy till I realized what it was and got put on medication for like ruminating thoughts and anxiety and, you know, very mild depression and still like a minor, it's, it's a very minor dose SSRI, but it's something that like, I have dreams of like not wanting to be on. And I even stopped it when I was pregnant with my daughter and my husband, I didn't tell him. And he looked at me, he goes, something's different, you know? And then, then he was like, are you not taking your medicine? Because I went straight back to that, but it wow. just takes the edge off. I don't necessarily, I haven't gotten rid of the rumination. It just, I can manage it with the medicine. So, I mean, if there's a way out with something like ketamine, because like you said, it is that constant replaying of, I was doing it this morning. I was up extremely early with, with having business calls. And I, and I replayed an email in my head like 15 million times where I'm sure that person just sent the email and disappeared, you know, went about their day. And I'm still thinking about it. It's, you know, 12 o'clock here. And it was, you know, 4.45 in the morning when I wrote that. Oh, that's so frustrating, Courtney. I feel yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, I really do because we can just hang on to these things. And I don't know if you've read Becoming Supernatural by Joe Dispenza. I, I actually have it, but I've never actually read it. Mm -hmm. I somehow got through that entire book and I didn't listen to it. I actually read it. It took me like a year, but whatever. And, um, but he, he has a part in there about our chemistry in our brain and we can get, it can release a chemical, these stressful thoughts, these types of mm -hmm. thoughts can release a chemical that then we become addicted to. And so, you know, there, there are brain chemistry components to this and mm -hmm. our brain is so fascinating. But, you know, breaking out of that, I think just you recognizing that that's going on is a huge step because yeah. we didn't know before. We didn't know it was a normal. I mm -hmm. can relate to you because I thought everyone was doing that. And when yeah. I read literally that day, I, the next day I meet Allie, you know, when I read that's a thing, I was like, holy crap, there's a word for this. This isn't normal. This isn't like yeah. I thought I, I, I guess I 
knew it didn't feel normal, but at this, uh, that I didn't feel normal, but at the same time, I just figured everybody was going through it or something. You know. This is life. Yeah. This is life. I figured this is how it is. And so, yeah. yeah. Oh man. I, I can, I just can relate, but you know, at least you're on a path of recognizing mm. it. You're getting intentional about it and you know, yeah. doing something. There's zero judgment for me about SSRIs. They are yeah. very useful in many situations. And so, you know, it's going to be a process for you, right? Yeah. Like it's going well, to be a, a process. Well, even like you said with, you know, you heard, you read about it and then the next day you met that lady. I mean, if that's not divine intervention, I don't know what is, you know, that's like the universe bringing you together. But, yeah. but even, yeah, going through your life and having those things. And it's like, you just think that this is normal and you think that that's like the way you're supposed to think. And, and I know even when I first took the SSRI, like I was just like, wow, when it took that little edge off, it's like, life would have been a lot easier for like, why am I just doing this at like 35 when I should have been doing it? Like when I was 18, you know, and, and I don't think there's as much of a stigma about things like that. Now we've talked mm -hmm. about, I've always talked very openly about it, but that whole, I mean, it can really wreak havoc on your life when you go into those ruminating thoughts, because that's when the control comes in. That's when the fear comes in and we get addicted, whether it's good or bad, we get addicted to whatever feeling we're comfortable with. So absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, you know, like it, it is frustrating. You're like, life would have been a lot easier mm -hmm. if, if my brain wasn't doing this. And so yeah. how do I break those cycles? And do you meditate too? You know, I do on occasion. I'm not, I'm not great at doing it. I'm better at the guided meditations because I do really have a hard time corralling my thoughts. It is something, um, you know, when I do, I'm so imaginative and I let my mind go wild. So I really, I really like being taken on a journey, journey in meditation, but I think it would be extremely beneficial for me if I could actually get quiet. They, they say the people that have the hardest time with it are the ones that need it the most, <laughs> right? I know, and so, right? Totally. yeah, so it really is for me, meditation. And I just started very, very small with like a two or five minute timer on my phone. Mm -hmm. And just every time I caught my mind just wandering around, I would just pull it back and just sit and maybe focus on my breath or something really simple. And, um, yeah, I feel like guided meditations aren't as beneficial for me. And so I really do just do the sound of like a trickling spring, you know, or whatever. So yeah. I do sit, I do try to sit down and, and some days it's only five minutes and some days it's 10 and some days it's 30. But yeah. a lot of times you don't have a ton of time for that, right? So you yeah. have to intentionally find the time. I had one podcast guest, Allison Canavan, who is a meditation expert. And she was just saying, she has a kid too. She just said she's famous for her car meditations. And so she'll have those mm. two minutes in the car. And when you're doing that, you're training your brain to just chill the hell out mm. on command. Right. And so that's the desire. Right. So mm -hmm. that's how I could look at it too. I'm like, ah, I am, it's like lifting a must, lifting a, a weight. It's like I'm training my brain just to slow down. And so that's really helped me. I probably started, I don't know, a little over 10 years ago. And, and it's a daily practice. And when I don't do it, I notice that I slip back into my ruminations pretty badly. I did it in May and I hadn't been meditating for like two weeks. I went through a thing where I was do, working some other on some other stuff and I, my mornings were really busy and I was just busy. So mm -hmm. everything just went by the wayside. I wasn't even yeah. feeding myself well. And I suddenly realized, oh my gosh, it's been weeks since I meditated and it shows. Like my mind was just a wild horse just running crazily. Right. And so I had to make a conscious effort to sit back down. And I felt like I forgot how I, mean, I, yeah. I sat yeah. down and I was like, I don't even know how to do this anymore. And mm -hmm. so I just had to get back to like, nope, just sit here, just sit here. Like that blank card that you drew, you know, just sit mm -hmm. here and let it all go. And when the thoughts come, cause they do, cause we're human, then you just yeah. let it go. And then you just come right back. And you don't beat yourself up about it. So uh, I think, it, you know, anytime, anybody that's struggling with rumination and listening to us, I think that that is something that has really, truly helped me. I feel like this whole conversation has been a guided, a channeled message for me. Um, <laughs> Yay! Even, mission accomplished. Yay, thank you. You're bringing it all in for me. A very selfish episode. But, but even, I mean, even like all you're talking- All of mine are. 
<laughs> all of mine are Courtney. Isn't all that so true? Isn't it like the podcast world? It's like we're all just searching for answers and learning for ourselves and hoping someone else gets some value along the way. But at the end of the day, we're happy because we're getting so much out of it. <laughs> I mean, precisely. You couldn't have described my show at all, any better. People are like, why do you do that? I'm like, because I need it. <laughs> That's exactly yeah, just come why. along yeah. this journey with me. Hopefully you get something out of it because I am. So. Yeah. And you get to meet all these cool people and you're like, this is great. It's like free therapy. Thanks. I know <laughs> it is. But it is also great because it expands to so many different perspectives and ways, you know, like yes. I have my spiritual mentor. I've been through all these things, you know, I've, I've learned, I read, but, but you can open up yourself up to so many different perspectives. It just allows yourself to become so much more well-rounded and, and take bits and pieces from everyone you talk to and learn. And it really just helps you evolve as a person. And I think that's the most beautiful thing. So I do too. Me too. So, oh my yes, goodness. And, and we're, is. we keep talking. So I want to give you a chance. Like, how can we find your podcast? What's it called? Where are your books? How can we work with you? All the good stuff. Awesome. Thank you so much. Of One course. of the easiest places to find everything about me is amyedwards.info. It's spelled just like it sounds A M Y. Amyedwards.info has links to my courses, it has links to tons of my podcasts on any platform that you want, my YouTube. It has links to, uh, how to work with me if you want to book a call to all my social media. I'm at Real Amy Edwards on Instagram if you want to reach out. And it has a link to sign up for my newsletter. So please do. And then you can keep up with my podcast and any podcast that I'm on. So thank you so much for having me today. It's been my oh. honor. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I really loved connecting. I'll put all the information of how to get in touch with you in the show notes, but I really awesome. appreciate and love this conversation. It was really, really enlightening for me. <laughs> Yay. That makes my heart so happy. It was for me too. I needed to get back in this moment. I needed to recalibrate to myself and, and there's nothing like just sitting down and remembering everything that you stand yeah. for. And it helps you, once you talk the talk, it helps you walk the walk. It helps you get totally. right back into it when we forget then you remember and you can enact it again and i'm real big on walking the walk of all the things i talk about so yes yeah. i i love that too many of us just say it and don't do it and, and i'm a strong believer in that so thank you for being that example thank you thank you for having me it's so wonderful to connect with you and i'm just very excited to be a guest on your show and i wish you all the best as you grow this and just keep living more intentionally. Thank you. Hopefully you talk to you soon, Amy. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that's it for today's Intentional Living with Courtney Myers. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you, Amy Edwards, for joining me in such a wonderful conversation all about tapping into what makes us our inner rock star, that sparkly person inside, and really diving into a deep conversation about rumination, something we've both struggled with and that doesn't get a lot of talk. So I truly loved having that conversation and also learning all the different practices to stay present, go back to the basics and really get in the moment so that we can truly learn to love ourselves and live more intentional and authentic. I'll put all the information of how to get in touch with Amy in the show notes. And as always, you can find intentional media and intentional living with Courtney Myers at CourtneyMyers.com. That's where you can find out ways to work with me, find out our courses, books, and everything else that we have coming up. So I can't wait to talk to you next week and I'll see you soon. Bye.